the new trailers for Dokemon Kingdom Connect have released, and with them, a bounty of new information. While on the surface the game is mostly the same as the original, there were several notable differences that can be found in these trailers, so let's take a look and analyze all these differences today. I've split all the differences I found into six different categories to better organize them. But before we start, it is worth noting that the trailer footage is from a development build, so it is very possible that several of the things I'm going to discuss will be changed by the time the game comes out. I mean, one of the screens literally has a debug menu in it. This footage is by no means final. Alright, let's begin with the trailer analysis and differences in Dokemon Kingdom Connect. I'm starting out with the obvious on this one, because it's literally all over this game's marketing. But the game features online connectivity, allowing people to play with others across the world. And while we do know that it has online connectivity, what we currently don't know is what modes this will apply to. The main point of question right now is if the story mode is going to have online connectivity, or if it will only apply to the other modes. And while I don't have a definitive answer to this, it is worth noting that during the online section of the trailer, one of the screens features footage containing one of these little guards, who only show up in the story mode. It's a little difficult to see because of how small the footage is, but he is there. It could just be random footage they use for that section, but it also gives me a little hope that the online connectivity extends to the story mode. We'll just have to wait and see if that's the case. Next, I'll talk about several of the graphical changes in Kinect. The game has been given the HD treatment with updated textures and lighting all over the place. Any textures that were originally pixelated have been sharpened up, with the style overall being given a brighter coat of paint. The best way to describe it is that the reds are a lot redder in Connect. What's interesting about these graphical updates is that they seem to be built off the original Japanese release and applied to every region that Connect is releasing in. We can tell this because of the lighting used in certain scenes. In the original Japanese release, when Angelo is asking to revive the player, she is cast in a dark shadow, whereas in the English release, she was brightened up to be more easily distinguished from her surroundings. This darker shading that the original Japanese version used can be seen in one of the website screenshots for Kinect. The original lighting can also be seen in the English trailer when the Darkling transformation occurs. As you can see, it's dark in the Japanese original, lighter in the English original, and darker in the updated release. So yeah, it's clear that the game was modeled more closely after the original Japanese release of Dokemon Kingdom, and doesn't apply many of the changes made for the original English release. Outside of textures and lighting, one other thing to note is that the town models have been shrunken considerably in Connect. I don't have any regional trivia for this one, this was just something that Connect did, and I don't really know why. Spinning off from the discussion of graphics, several of the UI elements have been changed and updated as well. The most notable of these being the game has an entirely different font from the original. Icons all over the place have also been improved. Job icons have been redrawn due to the originals being quite pixelated, the versus icon was updated to be more graphically colorful as well. And finally, the shop icons have been completely redone. The original Japanese release used kanji to represent its shop icons, whereas the original English release created its own icons to represent each section. While in Connect, every region is using a brand new set of unique icons not found in any other version of the game. Going down the list, a shopping basket is used for buying items, some gold coins are used for selling items, a battling fist is used for robbing the store, and a green door is used for leaving the store. Graphical and UI updates are nice and all, but did you know that Connect is going to be the first time that Dokemon Kingdom gets true widescreen support? You might be thinking, wait, wasn't the Wii one already in widescreen? And you'd be almost correct. The Wii version of Dokemon Kingdom features a wider display for the game than the PlayStation 2 version does, but it doesn't quite reach the 16x9 ratio of widescreen. Any footage of Dokemon Kingdom Wii on a widescreen display will have these tiny black bars on each side, but Kinect will finally be giving Dokemon Kingdom true widescreen support. By means of a technicality. Instead of increasing the amount of area that can be seen, Connect simply stretches the image a little bit to fit within the widescreen ratio. 
this is different than how something like the PlayStation 2 version of Dokomon Kingdom had its view increased when porting it over to the Wii. While most of the animations are consistently the same, there are a few weird differences that I saw. When the warrior does his victory animation, the animation used has the same motion as the original, but the actual animation and end pose are completely different. The best way to describe it is that the warrior is more slouched over in connect than his upright position in the original. There's also an animation difference when one of the players switches jobs. Or should I say rather a lack of animation. When switching to a new job there straight up isn't an animation like there is supposed to be. For reference, this is what the original animation looks like. But for some reason, it doesn't play in this part of the trailer. Most of the other animations appear to remain close to being the same, but there are very minor nuances that are different. Such as when the warrior does his strike animation, the sword doesn't raise up all that much in the end, like it does in the original. Or for the magician, her hair constantly flaps when she uses her offensive magic, where in the original, her hair comes to a stop after using it. If I had to guess, instead of porting over the old animations, these animations had to be remade for the new game to replicate the original as closely as possible. Due to Sero guidelines being stricter than they were when this game first released, Kinect has unfortunately had some characters censored with additional articles of clothing to meet with these new standards. The female warrior was given pants, and the female acrobat was given several articles of clothing on her arms, legs, and chest. You can even briefly see the changes on the acrobat's in-game model in the trailer footage. These two changes are consistent for all regions of the game, but for some reason, the western release has another note of censorship. The item shopkeeper Chance has been given less revealing clothing, but only in the English trailer. Looking at the same footage in the Japanese trailer, we can see that Chance is keeping to her original design in that region. Those were all the differences I was able to find in the English and Japanese trailers for Dokkan Kingdom Connect. There was honestly a lot more different than I originally thought, and there are bound to be more to find once the game releases. Thank you for joining me on this trailer analysis, and I'll see you later for some more Dokapon content.